Welcome to Sound and Nerd's Pecha Kucha series. Japanese for chit chat, a Pecha Kucha is 20 slides for 20 seconds each. This Pecha Kucha will review how to perform a hepatic Doppler ultrasound examination. After the presentation, stick around for a 10 question quiz to see if you learned how to go with the flow. The most common reason a hepatic Doppler ultrasound is ordered is because a medical provider suspects that a patient has portal hypertension. Portal hypertension is due to increased blood pressure within the liver. The most common cause of portal hypertension is cirrhosis. Other conditions that can cause portal hypertension include thrombosis of the portal vein or hepatic veins. The liver accepts a majority of its blood from the spleen and mesentery via the splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein when they create the portal vein. When blood is flowing into the liver, this is called hepatopetal flow. You can think of a bike pedaling towards the liver to remember this term. Hepatopetal flow is the normal direction of blood in the portal vein. When the liver becomes fibrotic, it is harder for the blood flow to enter the liver. This raises the vascular resistance or pressure. Blood flow in the portal vein will choose the path of least resistance and may start to reverse its flow away from the liver. This is called hepatofugal flow. Think of a fugitive running away from the liver. When a patient has portal hypertension, there are many clinical symptoms. Many of these overlap with cirrhosis like abnormal LFTs, ascites, diarrhea, and fatigue. On ultrasound, the overlap continues with a shrunken, nodular, and heterogeneous liver representing the common appearance of a cirrhotic liver. Once portal hypertension sets in though, new signs and symptoms emerge, such as splenomegaly due to the spleen becoming overloaded with blood and encephalopathy due to the blood not being filtered appropriately by the liver. The body also tries to create new pathways for the blood to flow through, like recanalization and collateral development. Collaterals at the splenic hilum may develop to compensate for the reversal of blood flow. Cavernous transformation is another compensation tactic and is the creation of new veins at the porta hepatis. These two conditions are visible by ultrasound. Dangerous esophageal varices may also develop. When these collaterals rupture, hematoemesis occurs and is life-threatening. Other vascular changes visible by ultrasound include the formation of a caput medusa. This is the dilation of superficial paraumbilical veins that can also be seen on the abdomen. Recanalization of the ligamentum teres, a remnant of the fetal umbilical vein, can also be seen exhibiting hepatofugal flow. The gold standard to diagnose portal hypertension is to use ultrasound to evaluate the patency, direction of flow, and velocities within the hepatic and portal system vessels. The sonographer should also know normal flow patterns, color assignment, and how to achieve the correct sonographic window for each vessel. Let's take a closer look at a normal hepatic Doppler protocol. After completing grayscale images of the abdominal organs, you will interrogate the abdominal blood vessels. Continue using the curved linear probe. The window you choose will make the vessel course in a direction that can achieve a 0 to 60 degree angle for Doppler. When scanning abdominal vessels, it is standard to keep the color map as red towards and blue away for the entire exam. Start at the splenic vein at the hilum. Use the left intercostal window to show a blue vessel exiting the spleen. Pulsed wave Doppler should show steady flow if the patient is holding their breath, or phasic flow if the patient is breathing, all beneath the baseline. With angle correct on and less than 60 degrees, measure the fastest velocity recorded. Evaluate for patency and flow direction as well. Next, hold the transducer and transverse. Using an anterior abdominal window, find the splenic vein at the midline. It will be red as it courses along the posterior edge of the pancreas. Pulse wave Doppler should show steady or phasic flow above the baseline. Thumb artifact may also be present from the aorta. With angle correct on and less than 60 degrees, measure the fastest velocity recorded. Evaluate for patency and flow direction as well. Turn the probe into a sagittal position. Using the anterior abdominal window, elongate the IVC. The IVC should be mostly blue with flashes of red due to pulsatility. Using pulse wave Doppler, the waveform will also appear pulsatile. There will be a W appearance in the waveform that should be below the baseline. Evaluate for patency and flow direction. Next, you will evaluate the left, middle, and right hepatic veins. The left hepatic vein is best seen with a transverse probe on the anterior abdomen. The middle hepatic vein can be seen from the anterior abdomen view or a right intercostal view. Choose a window that makes for the best angle. The right hepatic vein needs to be viewed from a right intercostal window with a transverse probe. The waveforms of all three vessels should be blue with flashes of red due to pulsatility. The pulsatility comes from the proximity to the heart. Place your pulse wave sample gate about 1-2 to two centimeters away from the IVC confluence. Like the IVC, the waveform will be above and below the baseline with a W component under the baseline. Evaluate for patency and direction of flow. The main portal vein is the next vessel to look at. Use an anterior abdominal view with a transducer and oblique transverse to elongate the main portal vein. This view creates a grayscale image that is optimal for looking for thrombus and measuring the main portal vein. Measure the main portal vein lumen from inner wall to inner wall. This measurement should be less than 13 millimeters in a normal patient. This window is not the best window for main portal vein Dopplering though. Bring your transducer to a right intercostal window. You should be able to see the main portal vein outside of the liver and branching into the right and left portal veins inside the liver. The main portal vein should be red. 
Pulse wave Doppler should show steadier phasic flow above the baseline. With angle cracked on and less than 60 degrees, measure the fastest velocity recorded. Evaluate for patency and flow direction as well. Next, the right and left portal veins are evaluated. For the left portal vein, use an anterior abdominal view with a transverse transducer. There is a segment of the left portal vein that runs vertically. Place a pulse wave Doppler in this area. For the right portal vein, use a right intercostal window. The right portal vein branches almost immediately as the main portal vein enters the liver. Both the right and left portal veins should be red. Pulse wave Doppler should show steadier phasic flow above the baseline. Evaluate for patency and flow direction as well. Remember that normal flow in the portal system is hepatopedal or towards the liver. To get ready for your last image, decrease the color scale, also known as the PRF. With a decreased color PRF, the main hepatic artery will begin to alias. This aliasing will draw your eye to the small artery as it courses next to the main portal vein. Using a right intercostal window, the main hepatic artery will be red. Placing your sample gate outside of the liver with angle cracked on in less than 60 degrees. The waveform should be low resistive and above the baseline. Measure both the peak systolic and end diastolic velocities. Following this protocol completes a basic hepatic Doppler examination. Remember you are evaluating for patency, direction of flow, and velocities with the vessels. Reverse flow or hepatofugal flow in the portal veins indicates portal hypertension. Be sure to use ultrasound to evaluate for other sonographic changes related to portal hypertension as well. Let's check what we learned. See if you can answer these 10 questions on hepatic Doppler. After the question is presented, you will have three seconds before the correct answer appears. What is the most common cause of portal hypertension? Cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is the fibrotic change to the liver, causing the liver bed to become high resistant to blood flow. Dangerous collaterals are associated with hematoemesis. Esophageal varices. Esophageal varices have a potential to rupture, which can cause life-threatening complications. What word means flow towards the liver? Hepatopedal. A great way to remember this is to remember pedaling a bike towards a destination. What word means flow away from the liver? Hepatofugal. Remember the fugitive running away. Which ligament can we canalize in the setting of portal hypertension? The ligamentum teres. Quite often seen in the transverse view of the left lobe, the ligamentum teres will appear as a patent vessel with color flow within. What landmark can be used to identify the location of the splenic vein at midline? The pancreas tail. Remember that the splenic vein at the midline is on the posterior side of the pancreas tail and appears red. Why are the IVC and hepatic veins pulsatile? Their proximity to the heart. The hepatic veins are the last vein to dump in before the IVC enters into the right atrium. The pulsatility in this area is directly related to the pumping of the heart. With standard color map, which color shows towards the transducer? Red. Red should be assigned towards the transducer and blue should be assigned away from the transducer. You do not want to invert your color map during a hepatic Doppler examination. What window should be used for the right hepatic vein, right portal vein, main portal vein, and main hepatic artery? The right intercostal window. Remember, you have the left intercostal window, an anterior abdominal window, and a right intercostal window. You want to choose the best window that gives you a 0 to 60 degree angle on the vessel you're sampling. Why does turning down the color PRF help to visualize the main hepatic artery? The aliasing makes it stand out from the portal vein. The main hepatic artery runs parallel with the portal vein. They are both hepatopedal vessels and if you turn down your PRF, you will induce aliasing within the main hepatic artery, helping to visualize its course along the portal vein. Thank you so much for watching this Pachacucha on abdominal ultrasound hepatic Doppler. Come back for more quick videos and more educational content.